You know, there was a time many years ago when we would hear these horror stories about a frog with five legs or a mosquito with two sets of wings, a uh, dog with one eye. Well, those days have come to be, and it's not animals, it's people. And what we have done is we have unleashed radiation into populated areas. We found out that we had a global disaster. Not only do we have a problem in Iraq, but we have a serious potential problem in Kosovo. This misinformation that's coming out is, is really hurting people. There is a, a lot of emotion in terms of the fact this is uranium and therefore a weapon of mass destruction. This is not a weapon of mass destruction. They're lying. The only thing to say to the Pentagon is that they're lying. Our government made the decision to use radioactive weapons. America celebrates her favorite sons, Generals Colin Powell and Norman Schwarzkopf, heroes of the ultra-modern Gulf War, an unprecedented triumph of both high-tech weaponry and low casualty rates, with less than 200 Americans killed in action. It was also the first war to see the use of a new weapons material, depleted uranium. The primary impact that it had in the Gulf was, it, it's one of the reasons that the war was so short. It's one of the things that helped us uh, win that war so quickly. We only were issued uh, what is called H-29A1 depleted uranium sable rounds. I don't remember uh, having any other type uh, ammunition. Uh, my distinct memory was that the weather was uh, extremely bad and visibility was poor due to oil fires and a fog that had, uh, had settled on the battlefield. Our sighting systems could see through the smoke and our main gun rounds, what we learned in our first engagements was that they were highly accurate and that they were very lethal. Almost every target that we hit with a main gun round was a catastrophic kill, meaning that the tank was immediately destroyed. An explosion, fire, and within just a few seconds, sometimes even the vehicle exploding and the turret coming off. And this gave the crews uh, a tremendous amount of confidence. The impact when the rounds impact obviously what they start to do is they start to burn cut their way through the material as it cuts through the uranium spalling the oxide is formed and inside the tank you have a shower of burning uranium everything in its path will if it's burnt it can burn will burn everything in there that can explode will explode and everybody that's in there will die the thing that makes the plate uranium so effective is the fact that it, it not only maintains its shape, but it actually becomes sharper, if you saw a real photograph, as it penetrates armor. Other materials, other, other penetrators, and the primary competing material right now is tungsten, will actually become blunt. The tungsten penetrators are not as effective, and the actual differences, I believe, are classified, but it's something on the order of the difference between being able to engage a target at 3,000 meters versus with tungsten penetrators, 2,000 meters. So it's a significant tactical advantage. Over 40 years of research uh, in the health effects of uh, uranium have told us what the, the health properties of this stuff are. And we're taking a look at the environmental effects. So we know the environmental effects, we know the health effects. And in my personal opinion, this is a safe material. 
And yet, before the Gulf War, the U.S. military's medical establishment had expressed serious concerns about the health effects of depleted uranium on civilian and military populations. Chemically highly toxic, DU had already been tied to increased rates of cancer and kidney disease, and one study had even warned of negative reactions from the press and public, saying that following combat, the long-term health risks to both natives and veterans may become issues in the acceptability and continued use of DU penetrators for military applications. My unit was in charge of all the ammunition used in Desert Storm. Anybody that was exposed to the penetrators by themselves, some of our EOD techs were that. Uh, they took more precautions. They had the equipment. They had the special suits. They had the Geiger counters that would take the readings, you know, so they were probably the most protected people over there. I don't know how much the individual soldiers under our command knew, and especially how much the uh, infantry soldiers and armor soldiers that were actually using the ammunition knew about it. The Gulf War was an invisible war, using invisible weapons and producing invisible diseases. When we went into Iraq, I was a driver. Upon entering into Iraq, as we got out of the desert, there was a lot of debris laying aside of us tanks shoes, military boots were laying in, in the sand. There were Iraqi tanks. There were Iraqi civilian convoys. There were all this equipment of Iraqi people that were charred and melted. And the, and the tires and everything was still burning as we were passing by. So when our convoy, we had to stop and we were stuck there for two hours with all these vehicles burning. So I got out and I took pictures because I was very alarmed of what I saw. It, it was pretty devastating what we saw, but I had no idea of what, why these tanks were burnt this bad and how things were melted. I didn't understand that concept. This is the... Um the tanks, they're burned. The buildings burned. These are the charred bodies I was telling you. This is the burned bodies. We climbed on the tanks. We, you know, went souvenir hunting and all the vehicles were around us and they were burning as we were passing through the convoys. But once we were in Iraq, a lot of us started getting sick. And we had, um, we called it black rain at the time. We had a lot of fallout on our skin. And uh, we were told not to worry about it. And one morning we woke up and the whole sand was just covered with like a silver kind of glow to it. So we went out and we collected some sand samples. So a lot of things up on the front were totally new to many of us. It was just unusual. This is General McCaffrey. This was my platoon sergeant that I drove with. And this is me. And General McCaffrey was telling us how the combat went and how well everything went. However, if you notice his uniform, he's got his protective gear here. He's got his protective pants on. We call it the mop suit. After he debriefed us, as he was leaving, he told our commander, get him in mop gear. This is a contaminated area. And we had to get our mop suits on to drive out of Iraq. And this is what's so important is because he was protected, we weren't. A lot of these soldiers got sick. We kept logs of people that moved through our location as patients. 